Hello everyone, and welcome to Straight Chilling. Each week we watch and review a horror film for your entertainment. You can send all questions and comments to straightchillingpodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to keep chilling. Shall we straight chilling? Serial killing? Five cold fillers on the mic, got you reeling. Five star ratings from the floor to the ceiling. If you catch a one star, no time for feelings. Got a demon DJ all the ones and twos. By the name El Sabato, don't get confused. So grab a seat by the fire, roast them all over two. And prepare to hear the legend of the straight chilling crew. What up, nerds? Welcome to yet another mini cast. My name is Bob, and um, it's just going to be me talking to you here. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about this new Black Christmas re remake uh, that just came out. Um, it's been uh, getting some heat, getting a little bit of flack, and I kind of wanted to weigh in on it a little bit as I was uh, finally able to get around to seeing it. Um, if you're unfamiliar, uh, Black Christmas, directed by Sophia Tikal. Um, she has most recently also directed the uh, Into the Dark, which is the Hulu series. Um, she did the segment New New, New Year, New You, uh, which is pretty solid. Um, and this movie is also starring Imogen Poots, um, who uh, was in Green Room, which, if you haven't seen that, don't sleep on it. That shit is awesome. Uh, so Black Christmas, uh, the synopsis for this little joint is as follows. Um, a group of female students are stalked by a stranger during their Christmas break. This is until the young sorority pledges discover that the killer is part of an underground college conspiracy. Uh, so it's relatively similar to the original plot, the original Black Christmas, uh, these sorority sisters are uh, staying at college during the Christmas break, so it's relatively vacant. A lot of the kids go home to visit their families, um, and they have uh, what they call an orphan's dinner, which is, you know, all these kids are feeling like orphans because they're stuck at school, so they all get together and have an orphan's dinner. Um, and during that, they, they get uh, picked off by these masked assailants uh, with bow and arrows. Um, so it's... Um, the first part of this, I'll keep spoiler free since this is like a brand new movie and then I'll drop the spoiler warning and get into the rest of it. Um, this is a PG 13 joint, um, which I, I don't really think hurts it too much. I mean, as far when it comes to the, the kill sequences, it does stray a little bit from the gore. It's not a super gory movie. Um, but it's not, I don't really think it needs to be to be successful. Um, and uh, it's it's very much about these young teenage girls. So it kind of makes sense that it would be rated PG-13 so that teenage girls can go see it um, without their parents and whatnot. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I would recommend you check it out. Um, I think I'm probably going to give this a three out of five. It's, uh, it's solid horror. It's probably best suited for teenagers who maybe haven't seen a ton of stuff. Um, but I think for what it's, uh, what it is and what, what it's trying to, to accomplish and comment on, I think it does very successfully. And, um, it's definitely something I think is worth seeing and, uh, and contemplating. It's definitely a movie with a message, um, and it, it uh, wears that on its sleeve. It's not trying to dance around anything at all. And I think that's very much to its benefit. Um, so take that for what it's worth. Um, I recommend you guys check this out uh, before the Christmas season is over. Um, and it is certainly a hell of a lot better than that 2006 remake. Sweet baby Christmas. That movie is rough. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and drop the spoiler warning here, and then I can get into uh, the rest of the movie. Here we go. Spoiler warning. All right. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, Riley is our main character, played by Imogen Poots, and she is a, uh, a survivor of sexual assault, and she has... Um, as, as we come into the movie here, uh, she has gone to the police about it. They don't believe her. Um, nobody seems to believe her other than her close uh, sorority sisters. And she's, she's uh, coping about as well as to be expected. Um, and uh, she, she has helped her sisters um, put together uh, a piece for this talent show that's going to 
be happening at their neighboring uh, fraternity. Uh, and the uh, the the song and dance that they're planning on doing is uh, they, they kind of write their own words to up on the rooftop and um, it, they make it all about uh, the these horrible events that have allegedly happened in this fraternity um, as far as just people being roofied and taken advantage of. And um, they're very straightforward and to the point about it. And um, uh, it turns out Riley's uh, assaulter is there and she calls him out directly. And um, the whole scene is like very, very impactful, very powerful. And um, the song is surprisingly well put together. Um, but it, it's definitely like a, a touching point in in the movie and that is so, sort of like where the whole thing kind of turns and like her, their specific sorority is kind of like uh pinpointed uh with all these murders and whatnot um so we have that going on also in this movie there's um uh carrie elwis is in it he's playing an english professor uh and he is he's turns out to be like kind of the head of this evil cult um there's a petition going around campus trying to get him fired. Um, he only teaches literature that's been produced by uh, white men, um, and he's portrayed as a bit of a misogynist. And um, the uh, the founder of the college, Nate Hawthorne, um, is also like a, he was a well known racist and misogynist and dabbled in uh, black magic apparently. Um, and there's a bust of, uh, Nate Hawthorne that's on campus that, uh, there was a, another petition going around trying to get that removed because of all these horrible things that he had done in his past. Um, and that is successful. That bust is removed and it's placed into the DKO frat house, uh, that I previously mentioned where they do the, uh, um, the talent show sequence at, and, um, that bust is sort of like the centerpiece of this cult. So when it shows up at the, fr- at the frat house, it starts bleeding this like black gooey stuff out of its eyes. And, um, it turns out that that, uh, if like rubbed onto, uh, the, the pledges foreheads, they're sort of like embodied by the spirit of Nate Hawthorne. And they then go forth and, and essentially murder any sort of, uh, females that are, uh, uh, stepping out of line or, or speaking out against them in any way, which after this uh, uh, song and dance done at the uh, the Christmas talent show, the, the sorority very much has done that already. So they get murdered. Um, like I said, the, uh, the the murder sequences are relatively. I don't. It's it's not going to change anything. It's not anything you haven't seen before. Um, but they're they're pulled off with a decent amount of tension. Um, the movie just in general has like some pretty solid atmosphere throughout it. And the Christmas vibe is like going pretty strong. Um, the, uh, the opening kill is probably my favorite kill of the movie in which they, uh, after the girls like drug away, there's like an overhead shot and it looks like she had made a snow angel. It's, um, pretty decent uh, imagery going on. Um, but the movie, I guess, it's got, it's obviously got a very strong, uh, feminist perspective going for it. And, uh, like I said, I think that's to the benefit of the movie. This movie is very much about something. I mean, it, it tackles rape culture head on, um, and sort of in a broader sense, just like it tackles systemic issues that like lead to these younger men kind of like just being indoctrinated into this like horrible way of thinking and behaving. Um, in, in, in that the, <laughs> Uh, uh, Nate Hawthorne's spirit l- like literally embodies them and makes them commit horrible acts. Um, it, it seems like there's just been some complaints about this movie being about something, which is a silly complaint to me, I think, because in a way, most movies, all movies are about something. Um, not all of them are trying to get a point across um, quite as blatantly as this movie is. Um, but it, you know, it might be easy to forget that the original black Christmas even has a a very strong plot point. That's, that's all about abortion. So even the original is still trying to comment on something here. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I don't get that complaint, I guess. And I think what this movie is trying to, to comment on is obviously like horrible things that actually happen in real life. This story is 
unfortunately not too far off from reality and it's something that needs to be commented on and warrants being talked about and if it's something that doesn't resonate with you then it's probably because the movie wasn't made for you and that's fine because there are two other versions of this movie to be enjoyed you know um so just like making the same exact movie again just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. We don't need three of them. You know, we already got to make, make it a different one, you know, a, a different perspective, which is, which is this. And I think that's a good thing. Changing it up is a good thing. Um, you know, it's not, it's not the seventies. So there's new stuff to talk about. Um, uh, yeah, uh, just in general, like I said, I, I, I dig this movie for what it is and what it's, what it's trying to, to talk about. Um, the, uh, the end of the movie sort of, uh, the big climax happens at the uh, frat house uh, where the sorority sisters sort of uh, uh, break in and they, they are able to kill um, the uh, fraternity guys that have been taken over by Nate Hawthorne's uh, spirit and they smash the bust of Nate Hawthorne open and the black goose spills out everywhere. And um, apparently there is a, a post credit sequence that I didn't stick around for. I, di- I didn't know there was one, but it shows the uh, sorority cat like licking up some of this black goo, apparently. Um, so that's essentially the movie here. Um, the best parts of the movie, honestly, are the chemistry between the sorority girls. Uh, that's where the movie really shines. You really, really feel their connection and their their friendship and their support of one another. Um, it's, uh, I don't know, this movie really shines in that way. I think it's, uh, like I said, it's worth seeing and considering. Um, three out of five for me. The uh, the Rotten Tomatoes on this, uh, the critics gave it a 40%. The users are sitting at a 29%, uh, which seems a little unfair, um, obviously, based on what I've said, uh, but just my opinion. Um... As far as the cooters are concerned, if we're talking cooters, it's really just the entire cult. Um, even though that's moderately unfair, I guess, because some of the some of these kids, like I said, are just like being possessed, willfully possessed, though. So uh, I don't know. Is it just Nate Hawthorne? Is it all these kids? I would say absolutely Nate Hawthorne, but really just, really just the whole fraternity. I think. Um, that's pretty much all I got to say about that. Uh, check it out. Um, this is probably going to be my last mini cast of the year. Kind of winding down. Only got a couple weeks left. Um, hopefully you guys are able to check this one out. Stay tuned. We're going to be back next week with another show. We're talking about Deadly Friend. And then after that, um, our wrap-up show of the year is going to be, you know, just the same thing we always do every year. We're talking our top 10 of 2019. So look forward to that. We got those coming your way. Uh, so until then, as always, all you mother truckers, please keep chilling.